Yes, boys, what is happening? Welcome back to another episode of the RDC World, aka the Dream Chasers Career Mode. You know the drill by now. Hit the like button before we even start this one. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 2K. I don't even know what the goal is anymore. It was always road to 1K. Now we've hit it. I'm just like, where do we go from here? Just hit the subscribe button, bro, if you're new. And if you've been here, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload, which you should know by now anyway if you're a fan of the series, is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A lot of people want me to upload more and i'm sorry i just can't do it right now but hopefully near future i might be able to push more uploads um but yeah i just i've got to work a real job as well as trying to do this so three uploads a week is all we can manage for now but hopefully you still enjoy the content that i provide but with that being said let's jump into some comments from the last few episodes if you're not up to date with the series get yourself up to date there's a playlist on the channel and let's jump into some comments and um, first of all i'm seeing harry wilson has signed for some spanish team there he was on our shortlist for a while used to play for Liverpool of course he's 27 now Harry Wilson that is crazy I thought like I always think of Harry Wilson as like a 19 year old I swear but um yeah let's jump into the comments First comment is from a few episodes ago. Uh, it's from my boy Reese. Shout out Reese. He says, sign all free agents, Messi, Bloodclart, and Neuer. Uh, we obviously picked up Messi and Obama, Bloodclart, Yang, but we didn't pick up Neuer in the end. He left this guy that I wanted to add to the shortlist. And I don't even want to try and pronounce his name, bro, because I feel like I'll just be disrespecting his whole family if I try and say his, his, <laughs> his second name there. He says it's a good option all around midfielder, so I'm guessing it's the centre mid guy here from Chelsea. Carney. Let's say he pros by PSG. So you know this kid's got potential. 20 years old, six foot one, ball control, finishing, dribbling, and short passing. That does sound like a good all-round midfielder. We're gonna scout him up. Um, and if he goes to PSG, I think that will probably be for a big price tag. So we might not be able to get him in. Maybe if he does go to PSG, we could loan him. Uh, but we'll scout him up and see um what well, I mean Reese even said in the comment, loan to buy is a good method um for the limited budget. Um Harwood Bellis from Man City, a good centre back, and Borges is a good striker for backup. I don't think we need a striker right now, but I will check out. Um, Bellis for the centre back position. So yeah, I left a comment saying I think he should loan out Duarte so that his rating goes up. Uh, and when he's 70 or 71 rated, he can maybe be a backup for the Prem. Now I do like the sound of that. Um, Edson Duarte, of course, our youth right winger. I'm on the wrong screen. Give me a sec. Here he is, Edson Duarte, exciting prospect, which means his potential is greater than 85. Um, and he's 17 years old, can play right wing and cam. I played him in preseason. Really like this guy in game too. Um, and obviously he's our backup to Messi right now because we signed Cole. Palmer and he's out injured still for two months so with Cole Palmer being injured our only backup on that right wing spot if something happens to Messi or we get rid of Messi um, the only backup is Edson Duarte but I would like to send him out on loan because of course we're going to play Cole Palmer once he comes back or do we keep Duarte and use Duarte more than Cole Palmer and send Palmer out on loan because he's coming back from injury. He's going to have low match sharpness. His potential's dropped. You see his status there. He's lost all of his potential with that injury. So do we send Palmer out on loan once he comes back fifth? Because obviously we've still got two months and I don't want to send Duarte out now and then not have a backup for that right wing spot. Do you know what I mean? So... I'm thinking about Lone and Duarte, but I'm not too sure yet. And the thing is with Messi too, I'm not too sure whether we should keep him or get rid of him. Um, I did pose that question in the last few episodes and there's been a lot of comments, so we'll go through all of them now. This comment says, with the first performances, I think keep Messi and Modric on the team. It's not too bad, but as soon as they get too OP, put them in the cup team until you sell them. Um, I mean, of course, Messi, we might trade them, um, not sell them. And as for Luka Modric, he right now is retiring at the end of the season. So Modric, he's dropped one overall already to 78 and um, he's still a great player in game but yeah Modric is on his way out at the end of the season shout out to Shabadu man he always leaves big comments he said player of the episode is the girl with the massive head sign her and get her on the end of some crosses that's not a bad shout if you didn't see the last episode there was a girl in the crowd with a giant head bro that was crazy it must have been Harry Maguire's daughter or something but <laughs> anyway um you'll have to sell some high earners to make up for Messi and all of his wages yeah of course they took in most of the wage budget uh, once we did sign them from the free agent you could also look at some of the better players around the teams that just went down to League One. Uh, and when you get to the Prem, try and poach them from relegated teams there too. Now, what that makes, uh, what that reminds me of actually to say is that we did end up signing last episode, or I think, was, was it last episode? We signed this guy, Romeo Lavia, from Southampton, um, and they let him go for like 1.5 or 2 million, um, and I didn't expect to be able to sign a player from Southampton in the championship, but as we check out the standings here, Southampton are actually in the championship with us. They must have got relegated from the Prem. You can see them in uh, at the top there in P11. So, yeah, Southampton are in the championship, and we've signed their star defensive midfielder off them. Um, so hopefully, going forward, we can use 
use him again in the games against Southampton and try and get some points off them. Shabadou also said, if you're changing the formation, try a 4-4-2 diamond with Messi behind Jones and Field with Aubameyang on the bench, Modric and Elliott in the middle and Naylor as DM. I really like the sound of that, but the only problem is with that formation is that Hashimoto then has to drop to the bench and Hashimoto is one of my favorite players in the team. I want Hashimoto to play as much as possible to keep that potential up. He's currently got potential to be special, which means his potential is 90 plus. So I definitely want to give Hashimoto as much game time as we can. Um, but yeah, this, he could be a bench player. His stamina is quite low, so he does run out of stamina quite quickly in games. But I do really like the sound of the 4-4-2 diamond formation with two strikers and Messi in the cam. But then also Lee drops to the bench. We lose Lee. So that's a, another star player that I wouldn't really want to see drop to the bench. Mohamed said, swap Messi for Harvey Elliott. And if you swap Messi, make the formation 4-2-3-1 because you'll have three cams. Harvey Elliott, Morgan Elliott and Lee, um, who has cam in secondary position. Start at Bamiang for this season. A Bamiang still 80 pace and 10 overall to Field and Jones. So a good temporary striker. Looking at his age and rate and it's pretty realistic to be a regular striker for a championship side aiming for promotion. Now, of course, we did play 4-2-3-1 in the very first season of the Dream Chasers. We did change that in season two. Um, and as you can see on the screen here, we still have it set up from season one. That's why there's all random players in positions. Um, yeah, the 4 2 3 1 formation I'm a big fan of, and I probably will look to change to that. Um, but I think for this formation, obviously, we'd have to play Modric and Naylor as defensive midfielders for that. And again, I want Hashimoto to play. Or we could just play Hashimoto over Modric, but Modric is the veteran. He's retiring this season. I do want to start him, and he's got that quality in there. Do you know what I mean? He can win us the game. I replied to that guy's comment saying, I like this, and somebody else replied, uh, for me, I won't advise to sell Messi. Just give him a run of games, and he'll be fine uh, back in form. Uh, he's been a free agent without getting games, which is a good point. And as we saw in the last episode, Messi did pick up some form uh, and was playing like the Lionel Messi that we do like are used to seeing. Um, although, as of the day I'm recording this, Lionel Messi, Argentina have just been beat by Saudi Arabia 2-1 in the World Cup so that is crazy um, hopefully Messi turns up in our career mode unlike in that game this guy left a comment saying don't sign Hans Axelsson Ricky J Jones is a perfect fit and you already have a Bamiang and Field of course I've already mentioned we've got a big dilemma with the strikers we've got three strikers who are all good enough to start really uh, and then we were looking at this guy Hans Axelsson who is of course Ibrahimovic's regen um, but I think for now yeah we've made the decision we're not going to try and pursue Hans Axelsson. Um, he does actually look like a really good player. He, obviously, young, tall, five-star weak foot already, good physical stats, um, and he's going to be great in front of goal. 84 finishing at 19 years old is crazy. But another thing, if we do sign this guy, it'll be pretty pointless because we've got Ronaldo retiring at the end of the season. So we're going to get Ronaldo's regen next season. And that for sure is going to be the guy up front for us. So, I mean, if we can even afford him, Ronaldo's regen might be like, I don't even know, like 90 rated as a 17 year old. And then we can't even afford him anyway, but we'll have to see next season. Nicola left a comment saying, swap Messi while he has good market value. Now, of course, Messi is what, 39 years old in our career mode now, I think. He's just going to keep going down in overall. Um, so, and we will lose that market value. So while he's up... I do really want to think about the future and I am leaning towards this swap deal idea to get Harvey Elliott in because they're basically the same player. Watch that get clipped in the future when Harvey Elliott has a stinker. I'm comparing Harvey Elliott to Messi. I don't mean that in terms of quality, but I mean in terms of our career mode, what they can do for us. Messi right now is playing on the right wing, but also we can play him in the central um, attack and midfield role. Harvey Elliott has that freedom to play on the wing, can also play in the cam, can also play CM in a 4-3-3 as we see him do for Liverpool um, in real life. So Harvey Elliott is a utility player. We can use him all around that pitch in the attacking area. I would really like to get him in, and I think I am leaning towards swapping Messi for Harvey Elliott yet it was fun to have Messi in and say we've signed Messi to the Dream Chasers because he's the best player of all time in my opinion but yeah Harvey Elliott bro I'm, I'm looking to the future because even um, we've got Cole Palmer and Edson Duarte to play on the right wing um, as youth players once they develop they can move into that right wing spot and then we've got Morgan Elliott in the centre midfield role who's like 30 now Harvey Elliott can be his replacement because Harvey Elliott can then move from the right wing to the centre mid role and I think I really am leaning towards that train of thought um, rather than keeping Messi for the season just watching him lose value and then we can't sign Harvey Elliott next season because he'll be too expensive because by the end of the season Harvey Elliott will be at least like 
82 or 83 overall for Wolves and then he'll be even more expensive next season and we probably won't even be able to afford him with a Prem budget so I'm leaning towards swapping Messi at the minute this guy left another comment saying I think you should keep Messi till he retires then his regen could step in for him because his regen won't be as good as Messi is now now the thing is with regens I'm not sure if they changed it on this FIFA because I haven't actually done a career mode where somebody's retired at your club for a long time I've not done that for a while but I'm pretty sure even if somebody's at your club and then retires they go to a random team in the league so uh, and especially with promotion I'm not too sure how it works so let's in fact, let's just say next season we get to the Premier League right and Messi's still in our team then he retires we don't get Messi's regen he just goes to a random team in the league and then we have to search in the league for a young Argentinian right winger and sign him again I'm pretty sure that's how it works if I'm wrong let me know in the comments please because I'm not too like 100% sure on regens and how regens actually work but I'm pretty sure if somebody retires at your club you don't get the regen they go to another club in the league and just is randomly generated um, but yeah if I'm wrong let me know we had two comments here discussing Ricky J Jones Chris said loan out Ricky J Jones to use a Bamiyang more this season and see if Ricky J Jones get decent growth and Victor says love the series bro appreciate it mate keep messy you a Bamiyang much more than um, Ricky J Jones because he's not good. You can sell him to create one strong lineup. And then he also asked me to upload more, which I've already mentioned at the start of the video. I can't do right now, unfortunately, mate. But hopefully soon I can. Uh, but yeah, Ricky J Jones out on loan. I like that idea. Reggie Field is a dog up front. I don't care if he stays 70 overall for the whole season. He's a bags man. He can score from anywhere. Uh, and then we've got Abama who? Abama what? Abama blood clot Yang. Yeah, so Abama Yang is going to be our main guy possibly for this season with Reggie Field as backup or vice versa. Ricky J. Jones, I've added to the loan list as you can see. Uh, and hopefully someone comes in for him. And like we say, at the end of the season, he has some good growth. And then maybe once we get to the Premier League, he can be a great player, which we can either use as a backup or sell on. Usman left a comment saying, swap Messi for Nunes, bro. Now, I do actually really like Darwin Nunes. And getting Darwin Nunes in this team would be so fun. But we've already mentioned, like, we don't need a striker right now. And I think going forward in this career mode, it would be much more beneficial to have Harvey Elliott in the team rather than Darwin Nunes, although it would be really fun. Darwin Nunes has 97 acceleration. Bro, hey, it would be really fun to have Nunes at the team, but yeah, I don't think he fits in, even in our future plans once we get Ronaldo's regen and stuff. I don't think he fits in. But um, yeah, I'm definitely leaning more towards Harvey Elliott over and Nunes for swap deal. Quick shout out to Adam. He said, can you please scout Darami? He's a great Danish talent, so it'd be amazing if you could look into him. Now, he's left a lot of comments saying to scout this guy so i do want to go ahead and scout him up Mohamed darami plays for ajax i feel like ajax always have a danish player that is a baller i don't know if i'm making that up but i feel like i always see someone with the the danish flag playing for ajax who's always quality um but yeah we've gone ahead gonna go ahead and scout him up um and actually denmark have just kicked off as i'm recording this video so i don't know if darami's playing and if he scores if i go down and watch this game and darami scores then i'll probably end up signing him in my career mode because that's <laughs> That's what I do. If I like a guy in real life, I'll sign them on career mode. I asked just last episode to leave a comment. Who's your favorite player in the squad? Jordan said, favorite player has to be Tommy Bailey. That man is special. And I have to agree with you. Tommy Bailey is special. He's very low overall. But we are grinding um, his overall... Grind... Pause. We are grinding... Um, I don't even know. What am I even trying to say here? I don't know. We're playing Tommy Bailey a lot. He's only 61 rated, but he's going to be quality in the future. Yeah, this guy is special. And then he also mentioned Abama who? Abama what? Abama blood clot yang. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb said that um, his favourite player possibly is Lee. Uh, very underrated. And I do think Morgan Lee is very underrated. He's 80 overall. Great stats. Such a good impact player. First season, he wasn't great for us, but he's coming into this team and, and he's one of the first names on a team sheet for sure. Like, this guy is quality. That's why when, like, the guy suggested before about the 4-4-2 diamond, I was like, I don't really... I like the idea, but it means Lee drops out of the squad, which I don't like the idea of. So, yeah, we've got to keep Lee in the squad. And shout out to Sean, because he said, Obama who? Obama what? Obama blood clot, Yang. I just wanted to say it one more time before we get into the games today. Uh, but we are kicking off today's episode with a match against Huddersfield. Shout out to everyone that's left a comment. If I didn't include your comment, uh, don't feel too disheartened. I do read every single comment, um, but we just can't include them all in a video because already I've been recording for 20 minutes um, and I don't want this to go on for too long. Uh, but anyway, we've got a match against Huddersfield and the team are looking tired. Hashimoto is half dead. So we're going to bring in Rabija in that right centre mid position. Canales and Nicholas both both looking tired in the centre backs too. We're going to bring in Thiago Silva's regen, who I was not impressed with, and I checked in the squad hub. He has no potential. He's at the club since already. But this is meant to be Thiago Silva, unless we signed the wrong player. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I wasn't impressed with him at all. So he's going to play anyway. But yeah, it is what it is. 
We're also going to drop Nicholas just because he's so tired. We're going to play Cabrera in that centre mid uh, or centre back position, I should say. Um, yeah, because we're playing Huddersfield. They've only got two points. This should be an easy game. Let's jump into it. I've just seen Messi on the right and thought, why have we got Messi there? But <laughs> I completely forgot that Messi plays for us. We've just spoke for 15 minutes about Messi. <laughs> and I, I was thinking, why is Messi there? <laughs> completely forgot he played for us after speaking about him for 10 minutes. Don't know what's going on with me today, but um, hopefully I can keep me in the game against Huddersfield. Let's go. Oh, what a tackle that is, Thiago Silva. He is trying to make a name for himself. Oh my God, bro. No, maybe he's not. I was going to say, he's trying to prove to me that he can actually play this position. He cost us two goals last episode. So I was a bit wary about him, but giving him a chance to try and shine here. Even though he's lost his potential. King in goal as well, still special. What a player. Toby Brown, what a pass that is. Through to Elliot as we found the space. Elliot, one more across to Reggie. Field, great touch and Field puts it wide. Oh, after gassing him up in the intro. Field with the first chance of the game and he's put it so far wide. Great play in the build-up there between Theon Greyjoy and, of course, Morgan Elliot, who is still fighting for his position in the squad. He heard that we were trying to sign his brother, Harvey Elliot, and he doesn't want to get dropped. Elliot. Here's Messi, ball over the top to Reggie Field. That's a perfect pass. Reggie Field, look at the aggression there. And he's finished that one. Reggie Field, you brick shit house. Pick that one out, keeper. What a finish that is. What a ball from Messi. It was a bit under hit, but Reggie Field threw his head on it in the danger zone. Yeah, put his head right where the other uh, person's foot was. What a touch. What a goal. Let's re watch the replay. Look at that. Look at the strength and the aggression and the finish as well. He's kicked it through the player. What a man. Oh, offside, surely, ref. That was a good goal, but I thought that was... Wait there, I thought that's offside. I'm doing VAR right now. I'm doing homemade VAR. Yeah, let's get this. That, that is blatantly offside. I thought I played the offside line perfectly. I can't... This camera angle is poor. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Okay, let's pause it when he kicks the ball. Sorry, am I tripping? Or is that... That's offside. That is probably one of the tightest offside calls you will ever see. That is crazy. Now, that's offside. Look at the line in the box. His toes blatantly over it. That is so... That is so close. But uh, once again... But once again, it's Thiago Silva playing him on. If anything... That's offside, bro. Unless Theon's on the other side and I'm tripping. Nah, Theon's not there. That's blatantly offside, ref. Cheating. Okay, Huddersfield, I see how it is. I see how it's going to be. Oh my God, get it out. Please, someone. Mina. Mina, get it out. Get it out, somebody. They just blew the whistle there. That's crazy from the ref. That's crazy. How can you blow the whistle there? I'm not complaining, but how can you do that? Good play. Good goal. Good play and good goal. We're getting battered. Just made like five subs because we needed to change something. Oh, Ed Roberts, you shit house. Ed Roberts, you shit house. Thiago Silva has been beat to it. Oh my god, Thiago Silva, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? This guy is an imposter. This is not Thiago Silva reincarnated. This is not Thiago Silva. I know Thiago Silva real life is small, but to get... Look how... He's a pussy. Are you calling that a jump? Look, look that's, the other guys jumped twice as high as you, bro. What are you doing? And your haircut's trash. And you're like 17. He's never playing again. Ricky J. Jones can just not pass the ball. I need to stop passing it with him. I need to stop giving it to him. I need to stop playing him. Why do we bring him on him and not Aubameyang? Am I stupid? I don't even think Aubameyang was on the bench. Oh, Thiago Silva at fault again. What the fuck is going on? We're getting battered by Huddersfield, lad. Two of those goals have came from Ricky J. Jones losing the ball in the attack. But I can't even blame one particular player. I can't even blame because it's just me playing trash. Warren. Oh, Got to find that pass. Ricky J. Jones, that's a great goal. That is a great goal. Fair play to the lad. Come on, boys. It's back on. The comeback is back on. Ricky J. Jones, go on, Duarte. Oh, lad. Hey, that's good pressure from Ricky J. Though he is fighting for that shit. How is that not a corner, ref? Here's Warren. Get that ball inside, Ricky J. Jones. 
Nail it out wide to Duarte. What can Duarte do with it? Back inside, Ricky Jade. Nice turn, Penref! Penref! Oh, lad, this referee absolutely hates us. An offside goal and no pen. Lad, oh, is this the Qatar World Cup? What's going on with this corruption? Probably shouldn't say that, boys. If you don't see another episode from me, it's because I've been assassinated. Oh, boys, we've been battered by Huddersfield there. To be fair, if you take away the offside goal and Thiago Silva being a muppet, we won 2-0 there. Get in. What a win that was then. Thiago Silva with a 5.7. That's generous. All right, boys, I'm acting on impulse here after that game. We're doing it. Lionel Messi, it was fun. It was fun while it lasted. But I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking about the bigger picture. Hopefully, he's enjoyed seeing him play for the club. But it's time to try and sign the star man this guy you know once we get to the premier league yeah once we win it and stuff and win the champions league do you know who's gonna have the captain's armband and do you know who's gonna lift the trophy this guy right here bro so let's approach to buy player swap watch if he just turn this down now Lionel messi straight swap you don't want any more money because it's messi they don't want him they, they just want 39 mil and 15 percent selling clause that's crazy bro that's crazy bro we're gonna have to just sell messi then i guess They've said they don't want him, so we can't even offer Messi again, plus money. We're just going to have to end the, end the negotiation. Well, that's an L. Um, so, I guess we just transfer this Messi and try and get the 30 mil to pay. Um, the only one 34 mil. So, I guess that's what we've got to do. I think Messi's gone down again in overall. Yeah, he is. We can't add him to the transfer list. We can't add him to the transfer list. It only says to loan. What are we meant to do here, bro? That's wild. I said before, boys, about Reggie Field. I don't care if he stays at 70 overall, but already he's gone up to 71. That's a dog. I try and tell you this all the time. Reggie Field is the guy, bro. He is that guy. There was one more comment I wanted to go over, which I didn't mention at the start. It comes from my other boy, Liam. We signed Messi and said he's the GOAT. And Liam said, CR7, the GOAT. And all I have to say is... Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Anyway, boys, let's get into this Carabao Cup game against Cardiff. Um, we are at home for this one. Going to use our Cup squad, of course, the five-back formation. You can see it on the screen here a bit. Um, we're slacking for stamina, bro. Like, obviously, we've got a lot of players now, so we can rotate. But even still, everyone just gets tired so quick. That's how the squad looks, and let's jump into the game. Cardiff, I remember from last season, were actually really tough to play against. It looks like they've got a lot of a different uh, look to them, though, in terms of the squad for this one compared to how we played them last season. So... Let's jump into it. What a pass that is from Matt today. Another player we were looking to consider uh, to sell or loan out. But people told us to keep him. Tommy Bailey looking active in front of goal recently too. Curtis Warren coming to a new form as well. This cup squad, the players are really developing well and stepping up, boys. Here's Lavia in the middle. A new signing for this season. And here's Matt to the speak of the devil. Deflection of Tommy Bailey. Yeah, we're giving Lavia a go. Um, I was actually... I tried to loan Lavia out to give him some game time and use Naylor as our, like, main defensive midfielder for this season. And I realised we only loaned Lavia. We didn't buy him. So I tried to send him out on loan. Even though we've loaned him in ourselves, which obviously didn't work. Um, but that's offside, ref. Nice one. Yeah, Lavia, a player I'm excited to see develop and turn into something special um, going forward. If we do switch to like a 4-2-3-1 formation, he will be our star defensive midfielder, I can tell already. Big tackle again, Matt. What a player he is. I don't know why I ever doubted him. Here's Warren. We've got Nadzinho on the overlap. Look at that. Early cross into the middle. Tommy Bailey going for an overhead kick there. Ambitious attempt. I think he's given a free kick. Um... Yeah, but the ref points the wrong way for a free kick. But yeah, high boots from Tommy Bailey there. Lucky not to find himself in the book. Tom Sang. Big tackle, Lavia. Oh, big tackle, Lavia. And he's starting the counter-attack. And he's played it through. Abama who? Abama what? Abama blood, Clark Yang. On the score sheet. Romeo Lavia with the tackle, with the assist. What a player he is. Wow, boys. I just called it that he's going to be a guy for the future. And wow, what a start. Big tackle again from Lavia. Can he do the same? Here we go. Here we go. Abamyang. This time it's Tommy Bailey at the near post. Tommy Bailey along the floor. What a finish. And it's 2 0 within the first 28 minutes, boys. And it's Lavia again starting that attack. What a player he is. Great pass. Abamyang. And that's his quality. Look at that for a pass. And a great finish from the young lad, Tommy Bailey. This cup squad is more fun to play with than the actual main league squad. I swear down, boys. Big tackle from Cabrera as well. See, boys, this everyone in this squad are just up for it. 
They are up for it. I mean, they're all fighting for a place in the starting eleven in the main uh, squad. So of course they're going to be up for it. And that's a lovely outside the pass, uh, outside the foot pass there from Curtis Warren back inside. Warren, Abamyang. Oh my God, what a, what a save! What a goal that would have been. See, boys, even Curtis Warren stepping up this game. Like this cup squad is special. Here's Ed Roberts, Abamyang. That's an easy finish off oh, the post. No way. <laughs> Well, many have wondered if they would get it over the line in terms of the... Ooh, Carvalho to Leicester. That's an interesting transfer. I forgot about Carvalho. You know, that's a player I might look at myself. Oh, what have I done there? What? Have, that's the most insane penalty I've ever given away, I think. That's the most reckless tackle I've ever done in a box. I'll save it, though. Could have done the clean cheat. He's going left anyway, and he has done. Big save. Gabriel Guterres. Look at, look at that brolic man right there. He's built like the rock. You know what I mean? Like, that is a huge guy. Even look at the size of the number on his back there. They're in two different fonts. That's how big his shirt is, bro. Like, this guy, and he just hit the ground there. I felt the ground shaking my house. This guy's caught. Look at the size of him, bro. He is built. Oh, what a turn that is. Can Guterres save it? No, he can't, but he needs to stop diving because my house is shaking, bro. That guy's built like a fucking fridge. Bamiang, the near post, and it's gone in. A bummer who. Is that a hat trick? I don't even know. No, it's not because Tommy Bailey scored one. But what a goal that is. What a header. We've needed a guy from corners who can score headers. We've not scored a corner for a long time. Dominant jump, dominant strike. Obama Yang is the guy, boys. Let's go. He does want a hat trick, though. He's got the space. Trying to hit it. Obama who? Obama what? Obama blood clot, Yang. Yeah. Come on, boys. That's an easy hat trick. We've absolutely battered Cardiff here. But just look at this. Relentless. Gets the shot off. Doesn't get it. Bounces back to him and he's still there. Ah, oh, boys. Yeah. Hey. Easy win. Oh, big save, Guterres. Save that with the door of the freezer. And again, Guterres. What a save. This guy's special. Oh, big save from Guterres. For a sub keeper, this guy is special, man. Holding on to this clean sheet till the very last minute. Get in, boys. What a win that was then. Through to the next round of the cup. I don't even know what round that was. Obviously, early days because um, it's early in the season. But what a win. Make it make sense here. Aubameyang got three goals and one assist and only got an 8.6 rating. How does that even make sense, bro? That's a straight 10 out of 10 right there. Let me know your player of the episode in the comments too. The first game we got battered. So right now, I think the only candidate is about my blood clot yang but we'll have to wait and see until after the next game if anyone else can step up all right boys you've got another game against cardiff they've only got one point in the league so far and we've just played them so i'm gonna sim this but it's actually transfer deadline day so we're gonna sim this game and then to end the episode we'll finish deadline day too hopefully we can pick up a win against these we've just battered them in the cup so i know they've changed a few players around here but 2-0 win messi and messi on the score sheet right as we were considering getting rid of messi he's popped up with two goals in the final game and I've had a stinker, boys. I can't go back in for Harvey Elliott for another offer because we've just approached him and it's not been a week yet. So we've had a full-on stinker right there. So I guess it looks like we're stuck with Messi at least until January. Messi's actually gone plus one overall. He went down to 85. <laughs> How's he gone back up to 86, bro? I've got no clue, but that's crazy. Alexandro has gone from the free agents to Watford. Uh, maybe we should have looked in the free agents for some more players. Liverpool have received an offer from Aston Villa for 100 mil. 100.2 mil for Darwin Nunes. How the hell have Aston Villa got 100 million, bro? What the hell have they been doing over there? I don't even think they've got any players they could sell on to bring all that money in. That's crazy. We've also got a loan offer for Edson Duarte. Now, I'm going to delegate it so it swaps it to a normal loan offer. That could be something we consider. Should we loan out Duarte? Do we keep him? And, but then, yeah, I don't know. What should we do with Duarte? Now that we can't get Harvey Elliott in, I think we should loan him out. It's a shame that we couldn't loan out all of these youth players that we signed, especially all the Japanese youth players. Yeah, we did, of course, sign a lot of players from Japan, um, and we tried to loan them all out, and none of them have gone out on loan yet, and it's now the end of deadline day, so that's a shame. Transfer offer for Michael Davies. It's 20k over what the scouts suggest. I'm just going to accept it and try and get the deal through. We've also got a loan agreement for Duarte. Do we loan him out? I'm going to end the episode here, boys, with three hours left in deadline day. And hopefully you can get your comments in quick before I record the next episode. Um, and yeah, let me know. Do we loan out Edson Duarte? What I'm thinking is that for this right wing position, we've obviously got Messi right now. He's going to go down in value. We can't swap him for Harvey Elliott at the minute because we just can't do that, unfortunately. And they don't want him, which is my worst nightmare. And it's actually come true. 
Duarte's our backup for the right wing. But then, of course, we have Cole Palmer, who's out injured for another two months. Once Palmer comes back in, we'll get him worked back into the squad. And then where does Duarte go? So is it a good idea to loan out Duarte? Should we keep him? Who knows? Let me know in the comments, boys. And I will catch us next time. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know the vibes. Take it easy.